hello so we are going to be discussing my 2021 september reads wrap up the books that i read in september um i read 15 books so i'm very happy with that i'm trying to i met my goal did i have to rush and force myself to read five books in two and a half days to meet my goal because i decided to start reading once again maybe it's besides the point did i set up an entire 25 to 30 book tbr to keep myself motivated and know what to read next yes did i toss it to the side a few days into the month maybe yes um i'm a mood reader and i regretted making that tbr shortly after making it so i tossed it to the side i think i read about six books on my tbr maybe um and then just like read whatever i felt was i was in the mood to read or just what was convenient um so i'm gonna get into it the first book that i read was the raven boys by maggie stafader and i've been wanting to read this book since i was in like middle high school i think i was in like eighth or ninth grade when i first found this book and i've been wanting to read it since then and i, I finally i was supposed to buddy read it with someone so it made me read it this is the first book i read in september and while reading it i realized that i've never had an inkling a clue a smidgen of an idea of what this series was remotely about not at all um and so i read it and every little thing felt like a smack in the face smelled like a shock to my system because i had no idea what anything what was going to come next it was just a lot but it wasn't that bad and i am curious about the rest of the series hopefully <laughs> i read it soon after that i read the heart principle by helen Hoang, and I adored the concept of the premise of this book. It was a great concept, great premise, and I was very, very curious. And I hate that I just didn't enjoy it as much as I wish I could have. Um, and it was more about the pacing and the timing of how it all fell together. Also, I don't really care for first person too much. I can read first person. I've read plenty, and I like a lot of first person books, but I don't like the way a lot of people set up their first person point of views. And I don't care for dual point of view, and I'm pretty sure this book had dual point of view. Um, but the concept, this girl, Anna, she is in this relationship with this dude. And I'm going to be honest, he kind of sucks. He sucks very much. He decides that he wants an open relationship before he settles down and marries her or whatever. He wants to make sure he's not missing out on anything because he supposedly hasn't been with anyone since being with her. So he wants an open relationship. And, of course, she's rightfully upset. And she's like, well, if you can sleep with other people, does that mean I can? And he basically laughed. It was like, you're not going to do it. You you wouldn't want to. It's not something you'd be into. Sounds. Anyway. So, she's upset. She leaves. She talks to her friends. And she's like, it just makes me want to be petty and sleep with someone. Just to prove that I can and would. Um, Because if he can do it, why can't I do it? And she means it more as a joke. But her friends are like what he said sucks and what he's doing is trifling and however I, we do think you should take this to your advantage and sleep with someone too have a one night stand like make sure he's trying to prove that he you're right for him by sleeping with other people make sure he's right with for you by sleeping with other people after a while she decides to do just that so she tries to have a one night stand with this dude Quan. And it fails. It fails spectacularly. She chickens out. She has an anxiety attack. And he takes care of her. He takes her home. He takes care of her. And this happens several more times. They keep failing at having a one night stand and just getting closer and closer. Until, of course, love happens. Um, But there are other complications along the way, including her family. Um, And she gets diagnosed with, I think it's Asperger's. And from what little I understand of asperger's i appreciated seeing the representation in here um i appreciated that kwan was a de genuinely decent guy and i love i love good friendships i whenever a character has great friends i'm so i love her friends the little we see of them i love kwan's cousin slash best friend um but i just didn't care for the story i just the time the pacing felt it was one of the worst things for me the way the story moved in terms of time and pacing is just absolutely horrible to me um and it could, i didn't i did not like the way the first person felt in this book i just have no idea how to describe this feeling i tried talking to my uncle about it but i just 
I don't know. The pacing felt weird to me. The transitions sometimes feel weird. And the way the point of view was set up bothered me. That was a lot of time talking about a book that I didn't care for. Let's talk about another one. After that, I read We Are Inevitable by Gail Foreman. And I was so excited for this book because inevitable i have a lot of favorite words words that just really sit with me and i don't know why inevitable is one of them i love the word inevitable and i love gail for me because she wrote if i stay and i adored that book in middle slash high school and i reread it last month month and i still really liked it so i was so excited for this because i've read two series by her i loved them in middle high school i still like them today but this was terrible so disappointed i was so excited for it and i was so disappointed i hated the main character i and also there there were times where the book gave me anxiety and i mean i guess that's how you're supposed to feel when everything is like crumbling down and it's one thing building on top of another thing on top of another thing on top of another thing and things crumble down and that's basically what was going on here and i hate that feeling i do not like getting that feeling from books let it and and that doesn't inherently mean the book is bad because I mean I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to feel but I didn't care for that but also I just really did not care for the way the main character handled most things and the ending like you start to understand it and maybe it's different for the people but you start to understand things towards the middle end of the book and why he is the way he is and what's going on and the purpose for why he was written like that but it does not change the fact that it, for me it didn't make up for it I still hated it um and you want to talk about another book that I read right after that that I also hated and was super disappointed by? Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Sugira. Sugira. I was so excited for this. This is supposed to be all cute and fluffy and queer. And they said it was going to be delightfully romantic. Delightfully romantic right there. You see this? So I'm excited for some queer, happy fake dating happy romance i was so disappointed this was absolutely terrible i it wasn't delightful it wasn't romantic i am obsessed with these two words because i i went in preparing for delightful romance and i've not been able to get over the fact that that is not what we were given um it's basically okay what's the main character's name willa no nozomi so nozomi she's a hopeless romantic and she wants love and i'm not gonna lie the people who feel the need to be in a relationship and obsess over it aggravate my soul it's nothing wrong with wanting to be in a relationship it's nothing wrong with wanting romance but when that's like a huge part of your personality is obsessing over romance and needing a romance it bothers me it gets on my nerves especially in characters um and that's how she is and so she's trying every time she meets a girl she's trying to make this girl want her trying to make this into a relationship and it's not even like you care about them as a person you just want a relationship and that's really annoying you can't decide you want somebody to love you and give you everything but you don't even care about them as a person that's not why you're dating them you just want a relationship anyway so this girl she kisses was rude and like talking mess about her to her friend she ends up going to spend the summer with her uncle in what is it seattle I don't remember are they going to seattle san francisco san francisco um that they went to her and her brother go spend the summer in san francisco with their uncle um and his husband and when they're on the boat or something she meets this girl she thinks this girl is beautiful and she wants to try to like get with this girl the girl is clearly uninterested she dips she ends up running to this girl again and the girl's super upset about her ex who just broke up with her. And so Nozomi is on crack because she decides, A, this girl is single now. I got a chance. That's not what you should think when someone just gets out of a relationship and is literally crying in front of you. The whole time. She's just like, 
this is I got what I want. Now I have an opening. No. Eventually it leads to them fake dating to, to make Willows, the girl she saw, ex jealous. I couldn't stand Willow. I didn't particularly care for Willow's ex, and I didn't care for that person she inevitably ends up with either. I hated everybody in this book. The parents make me mad. How she they treat her, how she treats them. The brother is the only person I got any respect for. I didn't care about any of these characters. Didn't care for the brother. I mean, that's a lot. I didn't care for the parents. Who else? I'd fight Baba too. The uncle, the brother and the uncle, they're the only people I got respect for the whole series. Anyway, because I was so fed up with the first, those three books, but in a row, it was just too much. I reread Wolf Song by TJ Klum because I adored this book. I read it last year, um, and I loved it so much. It hurt very much. I never finished the other three books. I got halfway through the second book, and I got so anxious that I just stopped reading. Um, so I reread this, and I cried. <laughs> it's so good. I werewolves and witches and stuff exists i have no idea how to talk about this book i no idea um but it was great werewolves witches all sorts of stuff joe and ox my heart after that i decided to completely deviate from the rest of my tbr a Diary of Blood by st gibson this had poly rep this had queer rep there's vampires romances that are centuries long it's just so much and it's so great but what really said it for me was there's an online epilogue so this ends decently but of course you know you just be wanting more he has she has an online they have an online epilogue i have no idea um their pronouns okay her she has an epilogue online that like follows up and it's so good and it makes my heart feel like all warm and fluffy and then after that this is where things get good honey girl by morgan rogers when i tell you this book was everything this book was so good i i felt so much i read it with my friend tamia and my aunt and i sped through it it's so good it's so sweet it's one of the books it's one of the mini books i go into most books without having really any clue what they're about um and i've this is the reason i signed up for book of the month because i wanted it in hardback back in february and i only just read it this month um and it was so good i was anxious to read it because i didn't know what it was about and i was scared to be disappointed but i loved her gracie i loved her wife yuki i loved her friends and her parents i I had issues with her parents because a lot of it just made me think of my issues with my parents um but at least with them I like the way that it handled like your parents can emotionally and mentally hurt you without even trying to even with having the best of intentions I liked how they handled it I liked how they handled the mental health aspects I loved so much about this book. There was just so much. There were so many great quotes. I love the dedication. I have a dedication video I'm planning with this on TikTok. Um, there's just so much about it. My aunt said she cried, and I should have cried too. And then after that, after that, I read The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. And now this one, I wasn't going to read. I was so disappointed at first because I got it because I kept hearing about it. Also, book of the month. This was the third book of the month book I read this month. Crazy, right? Well, in September. Um, and I was going to read it because I kept hearing about it. But then I heard someone say it started. It was originally a Raylo fan fiction. And I don't care for Star Wars. And even though I don't know much about Star Wars, I know that Raylo is an absolutely not good, healthy relationship. Um, So I was like, I'm not going to read it. I don't care anymore. But somebody I follow loved it and shared a quote. And I was like, guess I have to read it. So I did, and I, everything about this book, it was so good. So first of all, he, Adam, is a professor at this university that she goes to, what's her name? Olive. 
all of those two but she's a a grad student candidate i don't think she's a grad student yet but i think she's a candidate to be a grad student i don't remember um but there is no like overall power dynamics he has never taught her he they will never be a student teacher and this is a fake dating joke but he does get permission from the dean he makes sure it's okay that there won't be any conf uh, complications or conflicts if they date they were like you just can't be over her um this certification there's a desertion there's a worry that i know and i cannot think of it right now but he can't be over in charge of judging it that's the only would have been the only remote conflict and they settled it beforehand this is also the he's a jerk to everybody but her trope but it's done well he's not he's not a just terrible person he's not an a-hole he's actually a very likable person once you understand him and it's not even just and i hate when people are like oh he's great once you get to know him when usually no they're not that great this is actually like that because for the most part he's just kind of stoic and standoffish from like the other students or whatever but his friends know him and she gets to know him and well, he's a genuinely decent person especially when you understand why he acts the way he does towards other students i this book was so much i loved it i one of my other aunts is reading it because of my video on tiktok about it um and it makes me happy i i love that book so much i might reread it it's soon after that i read lord of eternal night by ben alderson and look how pretty this is it's like a vampire demon Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, and it was pretty good. Jack is the main character, and he's like this witchy person. That's Marius. Yeah, Marius, Marius. And he's the vampire ish person. And he's trapped in this his castle. And each year, a uh, sacrifice is sent to him that he inevitably kills. Not by choice. Um, until Jack comes along and he's meant to break the curse. And other things happen. And it was pretty cute. I definitely wish it was more and that the there it was it's not too often often where I want things more drawn out, but I feel like that when a lot of the way it moved just felt a little too fast, but it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. After that though, is that no. It's not what I read after this. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. After this, I read, well, actually, technically before this, but I will. I read I Love You, I Hate You, I Miss You by L.A. Michaels. And I hated it. I hated everything about that book. I never hated the book more. It felt like something a 14 year old or younger 14 year old girl would write on Wattpad without any understanding of gay men or relationships or men in general. And it was the worst thing I've ever read. And I looked up the author thinking maybe it was like a Wattpad story initially with the teenage girl, no. If I found the right person, it, it was very much a man who wrote this. And I don't understand how we got this, but it was the worst thing I've read. Um, and then I read Me Moth, Moth Me by Ember McBride. This book, I had no idea. As usual, I had no idea what this book was going to be about. Um, I didn't realize it was a YA story told in verse. So when I first opened it, I thought it was going to, it was poetry. And I was very confused and I wasn't enjoying it until I realized that it is an actual story just told in verse. And again, I don't normally like that either. But when I got into this, I didn't want to put it down. I stayed up. It was like 2 a.m. when I started and I read it. I didn't put it down until I finished. Um, And it was great. I almost, cr I was in my pillow basically crying after finishing this book i my heart felt something for real for real after that i read beyond the black door by am strictly and i've been wanting to read this for so long because of the asexual representation 
and while I didn't enjoy the book I was really disappointed by this I the asexual representation was really good um it was okay excuse me I'm distracted trying to see what's going on outside my window. Don't judge me. I'm gonna go outside and see what's up. Anyway, I was really, dis <laughs> really disappointed by this. I don't. I don't know, but the asexual representation was great. Um, I just also I hate books where I don't understand the like for a love interest, like when especially love interests who are villains. And I'm not one who is just fond of villains in general, but like I can, I can enjoy villain romance as long as the villain is he just like an actual terrible just just a terrible like morally great i love morally great characters but just actual terrible people i don't understand it and i don't understand how the main character ever started to feel a love for them and it makes a little bit of sense when she's like oh i can't say what i want to say because it's spoiling but there is something she says and i'm like i get i can understand where this link could have come from and also we have to take into the fact that even though she spends a lot of time around this person we don't see all the time they spend together but the time we're not the problem with it though is because we're not shown the times where you actually feel the connection i don't understand where this connection came from like when we're not shown the points in time where oh they actually fell in love like i know she spends a lot of time with him but we're not shown anything of substance that will make sense to how she fell in love with him so it makes no sense to me but whatever Oop. um after that I read The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller and my friend bought this for my birthday last year and I'm just now reading it and I actually really did enjoy it once I got into it. Um, and I'll be honest, I just take forever to get into stories most of the time. It takes me a while before I can actually enjoy them or care about characters. But once I did, I did enjoy it. And when they said it was a, it took me a moment to understand when, cause they said it was a Slytherin romance and I was like, how? Once I got into it, I was like, okay, okay. Once it started picking up, I was like, I see you. And it very much can be interpreted as a villain romance. Um, I'm not a villain. My, I'm sorry, a Slytherin romance. Um, I like, what's his name? Callias. I'm pretty sure that's his name. I like him. I love Callias. I even like her after a while. Um she had me getting anxious sometimes when things started to catch up to her i was like girl if you don't fix it but she did she always she always had a plan uh and after that i read three's company by nr walker i read this because i wanted more poly rep um it was pretty sweet the romance was pretty sweet a lot of the story was unsurprisingly uh sex and i don't really care for reading sex that much so i kind of skimmed a lot um through those scenes but when we did get to just scenes of them being like romantic and heart to hearty, it was really good. Um, and last but not least, Sideline by Kara Beats. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, but yeah, this one, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel because it has so many things that I don't care for. It's based in Texas queer stories based in like southern or small towns scare me and i say that as someone who lives in tennessee um but we live here it also seems like just homophobia doesn't exist which i'm not upset about i i know that i when i was i had a class with some of my queer ya class i had last school year and someone was talking about gay utopias and I don't really care for gay utopias because it just makes it seem like homophobia doesn't exist. I love a good gay utopia, gaytopia. Do not give me a book that is full of homophobia, please. I would love to avoid any kind of phobia. And I mean, sometimes it's important to read and I'll read them and not saying the story can be good. I'll read them and I'll enjoy them, but it's just like, I like, why can't we just be happy? I'm so tired 
having to read story where there's so much trauma associated with it, especially when it comes to outing. Outing is such a big trigger for me. I cannot stand reading stories where characters are outed. It, it's, it's a harsh trigger for me. Um, so I like Gatopias because it's not something you have to worry about. Um, but this one, for the most part, it was cute, it was sweet or whatever, I guess. I don't know. The romance didn't really feel like it was like, I don't even think the romance was a big plot of it. Like, yeah, of course there is romance, but it wasn't such a, I don't know how to describe it because it was both important to the story, but not like any main focal point. I don't know how at all. But anyway, something that I did appreciate though. It's, and I don't know how to put it into words, but it's like their thoughts were more straightforward. I get really tired of stories where they keep mentioning this one event over and over again, but don't tell you what it is to like dang near the end of the story. It bothers me. And so not quite as soon as I would have liked, but much earlier than normal. They do tell you the issues that they have with each other. Their thoughts are straightforward. They don't let the communication simmer for too long for the most part. Um... So I appreciated that a lot. Um, but I think those are the 15 books that I've read this month. And hopefully, well, in September, those are the 15 books I read in September. And hopefully this month, October, I read at least as many. And hopefully I have much better opinions on a third of the books. Because I did not care for five of these, I think. So hopefully next, this month, October, I do. I enjoy more than I did this month in September um yeah so if you watch this thank you otherwise i'll see you later